I'm showing this on the Ides female trouser block, but you can use any standard trouser, male or female. And I'll link that in the description below if you'd like to purchase it. First, I'll grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle that's just a bit bigger than the size of my front and back patterns. With transform pattern, I'm just gonna move it over and then I'm gonna select my front and back patterns and right click and align them to bottom just to make sure that they're in line with each other. This is gonna make it easier when I need to copy paste all the internal lines. Now I'll right click on my back pattern and clone as internal shape. So when I place it down, I'm holding shift to keep it in line with the existing pattern. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my front pattern. The reason that you need to hold shift and the reason that I aligned the two patterns is that you can see the internal lines don't copy over when you clone as an internal shape. So now I'm gonna hold shift and select all the internal lines from my front pattern. And I'm just gonna do a control C, control V to copy paste them. And I just zoom in in order to get them placed in the correct spot. They'll kind of snap too, but the closer you zoom in, the easier it is. So again, holding shift to select all the internal lines, control or command C, control or command V, and then hold shift to keep them in line and just zoom in or focus on one line to line up with the existing pattern. So now this is really the pattern that we're gonna work on. If you wanna delete your existing garment, you can delete everything, but I would recommend keeping the waistband. I'm gonna go down to my bottom right here and click just 2D, and for a little while, we're gonna focus on only our 2D pattern. I'm on my edit pattern tool, and if you're using the same block as me, the first thing I'm gonna do is just delete these middle points on my vertical balance line. Then I'm gonna grab my internal polygon tool and draw a line straight across from the front crotch point. Then I go back to edit pattern and I will just copy paste that over and I'm holding shift so that I place it at the same level on the back pattern. Because these are internal lines, you can't extend or trim to the pattern outline. So you need to right click and choose extend or trim to internal line. So again, if you're using this block, the next thing I'll do is just delete these lines at the thigh we're going to need to select the crotch line and the knee line and distribute an internal line between segments, which is just going to put a line in the middle of the knee and the crotch point. You only need to extend or trim the edge that's on the out seam. So don't worry about the point on the inseam. And then you can again, just copy paste and hold shift to drag it over to the back pattern. Then with internal polygon, I'm just gonna draw a line from the top of the back rise down to the back crotch point. I can just see from experience that my pattern is just a little too narrow. So with edit pattern, I'm just gonna click and drag out the sides of my large rectangle. Now I need to select the crotch point of the line that I just drew and the line that I drew at the thigh. And I'm gonna right click on one of them and choose intersect and merge. With add point split line, I'm just gonna place a point on this horizontal line near my vertical balance line. I'm then gonna have to go to edit pattern and then drag it to line up with my vertical balance line. This is just easier because if you add a point directly there, you might accidentally add it to the vertical balance line. And what we need is to be able to measure this line from the center of the pant to this new crotch point. In order to replicate this on the front pattern, I need to drag this point over to my vertical balance line so that I can then drag it out and tap my right click and enter in the same measurement as I got on the back. So now these two horizontal lines are the same length from the center of the pant to the new crotch point, and then I will connect the crotch point to the top of the front rise. We need to extend the front and back rise at the top, so I wanna select this top point of that new rise line and I'm gonna hold control and click and drag and tap my right click. And I'm gonna enter in 0.563 as the distance moved, which is 9 sixteenths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters. I'm then gonna do the same thing at the back, extending that one 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Back to internal polygon. Now you just need to blend this new rise into your back and front waist. I'm gonna go back to my split screen view so you can see my 3D window. So on my pant, I've decided that I like the length that it is, but it's fairly common if you did wanna crop these a little bit for a drop crotch pant, that's pretty standard. 
Now I need to distribute another internal line between segments between the knee and the hem. I'm actually just going to click and drag and found that this kind of snapped too to extend this to the pattern outline. Then I'm going to copy paste it on the front pattern. Now we need to add a point on the hem of our pant at the inseam. So I'm going to right click on the line with edit pattern and choose split and I'm going to enter in three quarters of an inch. You'll do the same exact thing at the front inseam. Now with internal polygon, you're going to redraw your inseams. So starting at the new crotch point, you're going to click down at that line between the knee and the hem. You're going to double click to end at that marking on your hem that's three quarters of an inch away. Using your edit curve point tool, you're going to reshape the curve at the top just so that it creates a smooth transition with the straight line below. At this stage, don't worry about matching the front and the back. The last thing you need to do is draw a straight line at the out seam from the crotch point to the hem. So you can see on my back pattern that actually increases the width of my leg and on the front pattern it actually shaves off a tiny bit. Now we can grab our trace tool to trace these patterns out. So holding shift you're going to select the new pattern outline. So the new inseam shape, the new rise, the new back waist, and all the existing pieces and you might need to zoom in for the new outseam line. Then you're gonna right click on one of the lines and choose trace as pattern and place it in the 2D background. Then of course you're gonna do the same thing for the front pattern. Then I'm gonna clean these up starting by selecting all of my balance lines and extending or trimming them to the pattern outline. Sometimes with tracing patterns like this you end up with internal lines on top of the pattern outline and you wanna be sure to delete those. Then you can convert any extraneous segment points to curve points, but make sure that it's not distorting your line or your curve. So here I played around with adding curve points to maintain the size of my garment, but really this is a straight line from the crotch point to the hem, so I should probably just delete all the curve points and just hold on to this segment point here instead of converting it. On the other outseam though, I do end up with lots of extraneous segment points that I convert to curve points and then I clean them up with the edit curve point tool by removing most of them. I continue this process of converting segment points that I don't want into curve points and then making sure that my curve stays as it should using my internal lines as a reference. So the reason that we do this is if you just delete a segment point it deletes the shape of that curve and it will basically just connect one segment point to the next. So you need to convert them to curve points so that it doesn't distort your line. And then usually I remove all of these excessive curve points so that my curve stays nice and smooth. If you have a segment point that intersects with one of your internal lines and you'd like to remove it, you have to click and drag the end of the internal line just a little bit away from the pattern edge and then you can select that segment point and convert it to a curve point. My 2D window is a little bit chaotic, but at this stage all that you need is your new drop crotch pant pattern and the waistband from your original trouser if you have one. I'm going to select my front pant pattern and hit Shift F to get my arrangement points and then I'll just click on the best arrangement point to place the pattern. And I'll do the same with the back. I like to select my patterns in 2D and then click the arrangement point that I want. If you need to adjust the placement with your gizmo, just hit Shift F again to turn off your arrangement points. I always suggest arranging your 2D patterns over the avatar's shadow with the fronts over the avatar and the backs to the side. Once they're arranged, I'm gonna right click on my patterns and choose clone symmetric pattern with sewing or control D. This is always how you want to create symmetric clones of your patterns. Now I need to grab my original waistband and slide it down because I put it up in the air. So again, you only need to have your new drop crotch pant at this point and the waistband from your original trouser. So I just have all of these references in my 2D window, but I'm going to get rid of my original trouser. Now I'm just going to organize my waistband over the parts of the pant that it sews to. So I place my fronts over the front pant and I place my back over the center back of one side. Now I'll begin sewing my pant together. You could use free sewing or segment sewing depending on how you have this laid out. I have a notch for my back dart, so I'm going to use segment sewing to keep the two sides separate. It really just depends on what original pant you're using. 
and this isn't really a tutorial on the basics of sewing. So you can watch something more basic if you need to learn how to use segment and free sewing. When we get into the realm of proper pattern making and construction, and you have things like balance lines at the hip, I do recommend using free sewing or having notches and using segment sewing so that you make sure things like the hip balance line line up at the out seam. Ideally, everything is gonna match perfectly, but sometimes there's like a 16th of an inch, a millimeter off when you go to true it up. So you wanna make sure that these key points are matching up. Because of the fullness at the crotch, I'm just gonna select all of my pant patterns and strengthen by hitting Control H or Command L. This just helps when simulating to help it kind of work itself out where all of that fabric is coming together. If your waistband gets pulled down by the weight of the pant and you want to select it and freeze it, you can hit Control K or right click and choose freeze. I'm just doing a little tugging with my hand tool while simulation is on just to untangle this crotch area. Once that's done, I can select my whole pattern and unstrengthen. This method for drafting a drop crotch may give you a little bit of a discrepancy at the inseam. So to match my inseams up, I'm gonna grab my front left pattern and lay it over top of my back right. I like to use the semi-transparent pattern view in 2D so that I can kind of see through from one to the other. So I can see here that the hem is a little bit smaller at the front. And the easiest thing for me to do to match these, I decided to just match the curve exactly and actually decrease the hem width at the back. So I just drag these points in. Just remember when you have internal lines that line up with curve points, you might just have to select those lines and drag them out of the way so that you can access your curve points. And the best way to match a curve exactly is to actually put the curve points on top of each other. For your fly J stitch, you can right click on it and choose rotate parallel to, and then you can select that front rise and then the straight part of the J stitch. With a baggy crotch like this, you probably want the fly to be a little bit longer and a little bit wider. So I'm just gonna kind of place it a bit away from the edges. And then I can right click and choose extend or trim to pattern outline. So it just makes sense proportionately that it will be a little bit bigger when the crotch is dropped. If you're interested in adding the elastic waistband that we added to this pant, we have a separate video on that and I'll link that in the description below.